let me just give you guys a little update on what's been going on in my life. So I am restarting calorie counting, which ugh, I'm like not super excited about, but I just kind of had this thought one day. I was like, you know, my whole life, I have felt self-conscious and it would be so nice to not feel that way. Hello everyone, I'm Francesca. Welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, today we are doing a different video and I am nervous, okay. So, a few days ago on Instagram, I posted this picture, I'll put it here. A bunch of people were like, hey, can you tell us what you've been doing to lose weight? I was hesitant to make this video. I wasn't sure that I was gonna make this video ever, but there was such a positive response and I feel that I wanna share what I've been doing because I feel really confident in how I've been doing things, I'm really happy. And I just wanna be able to share that with people who are looking for help. I just, I want you to just remember I'm just, a person i have no training i have no nutrition i have no background in anything so please take everything i say with a grain of salt i'm just a girl who's figured out how to do things for my body the number one question that i was asked was how did you do it patience calorie deficit and consistent workouts okay it's nothing new it's nothing you haven't heard before and i, I trust me do i wish i could say oh you know i ate a magic bean and i lost 43 pounds overnight, yeah, but no, it wasn't like that. And I'm just gonna say this right now, if there are any negative comments, you're gonna be blocked right away. This is a sensitive subject, this is a personal subject, I'm just sharing it to help people. We can always have a conversation, but any negativity, you're out. And I also just wanna say one other thing, if you're like under 21, I'm gonna highly encourage you to turn this off. Like. Under 18, please turn this off or do not watch this. I don't know who this video is eventually going to reach. If you're 18 to 21, I'm gonna urge you to also turn this off. If you feel that you have problems with your body, if you feel that you you know, have things you wanna do, talk to your doctor, talk to your parents, talk to a teacher, talk to you know, whoever you feel comfortable with, an older sibling, okay? Don't take advice from strangers on the internet. So, I had to get my disclaimers out there. Let me, um, I wrote down my notes. So I could keep myself on track. This is probably gonna be a long video. I'm going to put chapters down below so you can jump around. So a few of you have been following me for like years and years. You've already noticed the change in my face because I've I've lost over 40 pounds. Now it's about 43 pounds down since April of 2019. And that's amazing. Like I'm first of all, I'm really proud of myself because that is like something I never thought I would be able to do. So that's incredible. I guess let me just give you a brief timeline of everything from like April of 2019. To now so april of 2019 i had just gotten out of my three and a half year long relationship with my ex-boyfriend when that relationship ended i decided that i really wanted to like take hold of my life again i wanted to feel more confident and happier again and just really go for it live life for myself live life for me yeah and at that point i remember i had stepped on the scale and i was the heaviest i'd ever been in my adult life I'm not gonna tell you guys my numbers of what I weigh because I think that's personal and I don't need to share that information with you, but just know that I'm five foot three, I'm not very tall, and I would was carrying a decent extra amount of weight on me that I definitely didn't need to have. Also, this thing I meant to say sooner, but I've, I guess I'm kind of nervous right now, so I'm trying to like ease into this. You don't need to lose weight, nobody needs to lose weight. You are beautiful and perfect the way you are and you're just doing what makes you happy. I'm not telling you you have to lose weight. And I was an amazing person back then. It's all about what's on the inside that counts. And our bodies are just our little, our external shells. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm saying that you have to lose weight or anything like that. This is just if you want help and you wanna know what I've been doing. Okay, so I step on the scale and I am like the heaviest that I've ever been as an adult. Like, you know, like you have your, like your zone, right? Maybe you're like in that like five to 10 pound range that you know you kind of always hover in. I was way outside of the five to 10 pound range. And there were, like I said, there were a lot of things going on in my life. Something I will say, I was vegan back then. Like it, it, I've been vegan for the last five and a half years. I don't account the veganism for the weight gain. Veganism has nothing to do with, in my opinion, weight gain and weight loss. Can it lead inherently to weight loss? If you, you know, are eating a lot more fruits and vegetables and things like that, of course, but weight gain and weight loss comes down to calories in and calories out. So if you're eating a lot of calories, like I was, even as a vegan, you're going to gain weight. Something that I think also would maybe attributed was to being a food blogger. You know, when I first started Plantfully Based back in 2016, I was doing really simple recipes and I was actually following a lot of like what Freely the Banana Girl was doing. Oh God, kill me, right? Um, so, you know, it was like a lot of that like high carb, low fat, like no oil and everything like that. And 
you know, it, it did work in the beginning. Listen, I dropped some weight when I first went vegan all those years ago, but because of doing food blogging and putting out the recipes that you guys love and know now, I had all this extra food sitting around all the time, right? So let's say like I made a recipe and there were four servings, maybe for lunch that day I had three of the four servings, right? Like that's a lot of extra calories that's just somebody doesn't need. Um, and then of course, you know, in conjunction with breakfast and dinner and everything like that. I was eating like a lot. There was a lot of food around me all the time. And even though it was vegan, and again, I'm not saying that veganism causes weight gain, it was just the extra calorie. You know, I can sit back now and say I wasn't exercising as consistently. I wasn't taking as good of care of my body as I needed to. And I had to like get back into it. I had to, I had to prioritize me. That was, that's what it comes down to. I had to prioritize me. So April 2018, I'm like, oh no, Francesca, Francesca, what did you do? What did you do? And I immediately was like, get back into it. Just get back into it. If you've seen some of my older videos from like 2017, 2018, you know that I used to count calories back then. And I had like little successes. I had lost five pounds, six pounds, you know, just like little numbers here and there. So I grabbed my scale because I know for me, that's the thing that works. I count calories. If that triggers you, please turn this video off right now because we will be talking about that further in a few minutes. And yeah, so I was like, grab your scale and just like get into it. Like, let's go girl. From April of, I wanna just, from April of 2019 to now, today, I have lost about 43 pounds. That was not a downhill journey. That was an up and down and all around journey. So my initial weight loss from April of 2019 to summer of 2020 was about 25 pounds. The day I took the cookbook picture, I was at the lowest weight I'd ever been as an adult. I was thrilled because I was so nervous taking a picture of myself for the cookbook. And I was so thrilled because I was the lowest I'd ever been. And I had like a goal and I was thinking I was working towards. I was still about 16-ish pounds heavier there than I am now. Then come the holidays, end of the year, like of, of 2020, and I gained back about six pounds, six, six, seven pounds, somewhere in there. Just like, you know, there's cookies around, there's treats around. And at the end of January of 2021, this year, I was like, all right, get back into it because you're creeping up a little bit and we don't want to do that. We've worked really hard. We've pretty much maintained the weight loss that we've established. And by, I'm saying we, I mean me. <laughs> don't let this happen again. You know, don't get back into your cycle. Don't get comfortable. Like you have goals. You've told yourself you wanted to hit certain numbers and things. So like, just do it. So then from end of January, 2020 to today, it's been about another 22 pounds down because don't forget I gained about the six, seven pounds. So all in all, over a 40 pound weight loss. I still have more goals. If I'm being quite honest, I would still love to lose another 15 to 20 pounds. I'll put a picture of me of how I look right now here in a bikini. Overall, I'm like loving how I'm shaping up. I'm loving the toning. I'm loving the definition and all these things, but I still have more that I want to accomplish, but like huge, huge difference. How did I do it? We're gonna first talk about mindset, which I know you're probably like, Francesca, why are we talking about mindset first? That seems so counterintuitive, but you have to change your mindset. A weight loss journey is just as much psychological as it is physical, okay? You have to make the consistent effort every day to choose, you know, maybe healthier options, better options, more nutritious options. You have to make the effort to work out. You have to make the effort to love yourself. And what I can say and what I'm most, what I'm most proud of actually throughout all of this, throughout every single part of this has been, I've done this out of a love for myself. Never, never out of as a punishment because I hate myself because I hate the way I look. Okay. This started because I was like, I need to fall back in love with me and I need to love me and I need to make sure that I am number one. I worked a lot on reframing my mindset on things. So for example, you know, the days when I'm feeling tired and I'm like, Oh God, I don't feel like working out. It's not, Oh, I have to work out. It's I have the ability to work out. I have the privilege to work out. I have the opportunity to work out my legs are strong my arms are strong my core is strong my you know all these things and I think about it from that mindset instead of like oh like I've got to do a workout like I hate my body I hate the way I look like no I love my body my body is so strong and it can do anything it wants and we get to go move it and exercise it and that's an awesome feeling and through reframing these mindsets and changing my mindset it has just helped me so much mentally and I think this is something that people so much overlook in a weight loss journey because it's a long haul guys this is two years two years okay i don't do things you know in a quick way because i personally don't think that's when 
the results stick if I'm being quite honest. The other thing that I did was I worked on my confidence and speaking my goals into existence and affirmations. So I started this actually more in this year, but I would do like five to 10 minutes of gratitude and affirmations every day and just telling myself that I'm confident and that I'm happy and that I'm beautiful. And I was telling myself, you know, that I, for me personally, because this was something that was important to me, that I weighed a certain number, that I, you know, I had more definition in my abs. And I have to tell you, I'm not saying that I have the most toned abs in the world. I definitely don't. But that for me and my body and what I've always looked like, this is the most definition I've ever seen in my stomach. And it's little and it's baby and it's minute. But for me, it's a really big deal. And I truly believe because I spoke all these things into existence. And even if you don't believe in gratitude and affirmations, that's fine. But I think writing down your goals and staying consistent with it and just just always reminding yourself I'm I'm beautiful I'm confident I'm happy I'm good I'm strong you know all these things it doesn't hurt it's never gonna hurt why would that hurt you know what I mean that's not and I think for so long and for so much of my life I spoke negatively to myself and I told myself all these things I was I wasn't pretty enough I was ugly I you know I had a chubby stomach I had chubby legs whatever it was and that didn't work right so why wouldn't I just try doing it from a positive mindset and I really I can't encourage you enough to do it from the positive mindset I can't encourage you enough to do it for out of love for yourself out of love never out of hate never never out of hate I hate doesn't get you anywhere in any aspect of life so do it out of love for yourself and just you need to have a bigger why than just oh I hate my body it needs to be I love my body I want my body to be healthy I want my body to be strong right all these things Um, I don't know it, I've never felt so confident and so strong and so me. Like I just, I feel good. Are there bad days? Yeah. Are there bad moments? Yeah. Is it natural? Of course. Not every day is a 10 out of 10 and that'd be utterly ridiculous to think it would be, but I just, mindset, it's all about the mindset. Like I said, weight loss journey is as much about the mind as it is about the physical. Now let's talk about the physical. So food. This is gonna be, I know everyone is always gonna to wanna to know about food and questions. So I calorie count and I eat in a calorie deficit. Let's just talk quickly about what a calorie deficit is. Calorie deficit does not mean that you are starving yourself, okay? I've been somebody who has done that in the past where I ate 1200 calories, 1300 calories, or how, you know, how low can I go? Do not do that. Do not do that. You need to eat, you need to feel your body. And especially if you're gonna be doing intense workouts, you better freaking be eating okay the best way that i can explain a calorie deficit and again please i'm not a nutritionist i am not a dietitian i am not i can't express this enough i'm not a doctor not a professional please if you have questions go talk to somebody more qualified than myself but basically our bodies have a certain amount of energy expenditure expen expenditure did i say that oh god i hope i said it right every day okay so every every second that you are alive, your body is burning calories, your organs need calories to move your food, to digest it, to breathe, to blink, your brain, everything needs calories, right? So you have a baseline level of calories that you need every day, just to live. If you sat here and did nothing all day, just to live, then you wake up, You maybe you walk to get your breakfast, maybe you walk downstairs, Maybe you walk upstairs, maybe, you know, whatever. Maybe you walk to a car, you walk to a train. You just burn more calories. Your body's burning, burning, burning. So you have all these calorie goals that you need to meet in order to just let your body survive and thrive. This is where the calorie calculator comes into play because there's a website that I went on. I'll link it down below, but and I'll try to do a little screenshot tutorial right now as we're talking. So you put in your um, information. I'm putting in fake information. Okay, this isn't my real stats just bear with me, but you put in your information and you put in like kind of how much you weigh, whether you're male or female, and then you put in your height and your energy levels every day, like kind of how much you exercise and taking into account, like if you do like a super active job and like things like that, and just answer them to the best of your ability. You're going to get a number. This is the amount of calories you need every day just to, just to be. Then it's going to tell you, you know, like for mild weight loss, and then there's like intense weight loss. I have found for me and what my body needs, I first started out at a calorie deficit of 1600 calories to 1650. It felt low. I felt a little lethargic, a little weak, a little tired. I mean, this was a few years ago, but I just, I wasn't feeling like peppy enough. I was losing weight, but I wasn't feeling like strong. Then I went up to 1800 to 1850 and that was a little too high because I, I was losing weight like a lot slower. 
it's not feeling right, okay? So then we go in the middle ground, 1700, 1750, found my sweet spot. I feel very satisfied, I feel very full. And I don't feel deprived and I always, always, always listen to my body. If my body is telling me, Francesca, we're hungry today, we gotta eat a little more, we eat a little more. If my body is telling me, Francesca, we're not very hungry today, guess what? We still go and eat something because we're not skipping meals, okay? I make sure to eat. I eat three meals a day, and then I usually have dessert. I'm not a big snacker because my meals are usually very, very big. Sometimes I will have a snack, but I just, I don't find myself snacking very often. Here's a quick tutorial on how to count your calories and use a kitchen scale. So basically, any food that you get, you know, one tortilla, 43 grams, okay, great. I always weigh everything that I eat, just so that way I can make sure, because even though it says that the weight should be 43 grams, this one's 45 grams, which is fine, but you just want to make sure you're accounting for that. And the same, you would just put any fruit that you're going to eat on here. You take that number, so we would take the 45 grams like that, and we're going to put it into a calorie calculator. I use chronometer, and that's pretty much it. So you weigh anything. So, I mean, I'm not eating this lemon, but let's say I was going to eat this lemon. Okay, 73 grams. Grams and milliliters are the same, by the way. You can change all the units on here. So basically, okay, grams whatever and then if you take it off the scale when it's at zero it's negative that and you can just set it back again so let's say okay 73 grams great okay i ate 73 grams of lemon i'm going to put that in my calorie calculator and that's it you just weigh everything out and that's pretty much all you have to do to count your calories and just track it in a tracking app my eating schedule i guess you could call it usually around 9 a.m i have breakfast Breakfast is usually, you guys have seen it in a few videos, like my little vegan breakfast sandwich, like the just egg and like some vegan ham and cheese. And sometimes I have a wrap and sometimes I have it on bread and then I have a piece of fruit. That holds me over typically until about 2.30, 3 o'clock. I don't know why, I just don't get hungry. I'm usually pretty busy, I'm working out, I'm doing work. Like I just, I'm not looking for food until then. Then I'm like, okay, we want lunch. Lunch changes every day, I mean, I don't know, it's whatever I'm in the mood for. Sometimes it's a bowl, sometimes it's salad, sometimes it's tacos, sometimes it's a wrap. Like, it just changes every single day. I have no like reasoning behind what to eat for lunch. And if I'm doing a recipe, then I will eat the recipe for lunch. But what I've learned now is I just count and portion out the recipe so I'm not eating maybe four servings, I'm eating one serving or one and a half servings, you know, whatever it may be. And then dinner, again, there's like no rhyme or reason. I just eat what I'm in the mood for. Maybe it's chickpea pasta. I love my chickpea pasta and I make the little chickpea pasta mac and cheese that I showed you guys in some of the what I eat in a days. Um, you know, bowls. It, it just, it's whatever I'm in the mood for. Maybe it's a vegan burger, you know. Like I said, it's whatever I'm in the mood for. Something I try to always do is I always have a fruit and a veggie with every meal or like fruit and or veggie so usually fruit in the morning and then vegetables for the rest of the day it's just kind of what i do but i find that way i like have things to focus on and i make sure that i'm getting that stuff in that's good for you we need our fruits and vegetables okay eat your fruits and veggies especially if you're an adult eat your fruits and veggies protein i'm sure there's gonna be questions about protein 80 to 100 grams of protein a day i think 80 to 100 grams of protein a day for me has been really great it's been easy to get it's been easy to do i don't feel like I'm eating way too much protein or anything like that. I feel good. This is how my body's feeling good. So 8 200 grams of protein a day, about 200 grams of carbs. If I go over, it's okay. It's fine. Carbs are good for us. They're energy. And fat is like 55 grams to 65 grams. Sometimes it's 70 grams. It just, like I don't pay that much attention to the macros aside from like just making sure I'm getting ample amounts of protein, I guess. And like about 1700 to 1750 calories sometimes a little more sometimes a little less usually somewhere in the middle i'm just trying to think what else i wanted to say about food oh i don't meal prep i don't like meal prepping it does not work for me i am very lucky that i get to work from home that i'm a food blogger and that i have the advantage to make my meals at home i on a daily basis they're quick meals they're 15 20 minute meals use a lot of like um you know pre-made things or I'll, if i do like make a big recipe and then i have it in the house that's cool too but like i don't have like a meal prep day i don't like meal prepping i get annoyed when i have four servings of a recipe and i need to keep eating it over and over again honestly because i'm the only one eating it something i also want to talk about carbs because it's something everyone always asks me about carbs are good for you we need carbs carbs are energy okay there's a difference between a sweet potato quinoa brown rice even white rice you know a regular potato right all those things that some people have unfortunately demonized there's a difference between that and like sugary cereals soda things like that and listen everything in moderation you have what makes you happy okay but 
I don't believe in like eating a low carb diet. I would, I would literally when people tell me on keto that they eat like 30 grams of carbs a day, I'm like, how? Carbs are good for you. Eat your freaking carbs, okay? No low carb. I'm, I don't do low carb. Healthy swaps, somebody asked me about that. I'm trying to like tell you guys what I've been doing, but also like I'd ask you guys if you have any questions. So healthy swaps. So a few things that I could say that I swap that I think I've made a difference is instead of regular pasta, I do use chickpea pasta now. Don't get me wrong, I'm Italian. I love regular pasta. However, chickpea pasta has more protein, fiber, nutrients, things like that. Regular pasta is great for you too. Do what makes you happy, but I've just found for me that chickpea pasta seems to be working pretty well and it's a great way because I don't feel deprived. I don't feel like I'm not getting to enjoy my pasta. I really like the chickpea pasta now, which is so funny because I put out a video like years ago where I tried the chickpea pasta and I was miserable, but now I, I really, really like it. The bread, I use 647 bread. I've showed you guys that I think in a what I eat in a day recently, but I really like that bread. It's a good bread. It's I don't know, it's a low calorie, lower carb bread. Again, just what I like for me, for my needs. Eat whatever bread makes you happy, you know? The Ezekiel bread is great. That's an awesome bread. The Silver Hills bread is awesome. So there's a lot of options out there. My wraps, I do, I listen, if there's one thing I'm thankful for, it is a carb balanced tortilla wrap from the brand Mission, okay? I don't know what they do to it, but it's like a medium sized tortilla and it's either like 60 to 70 calories for a tortilla and it's, I don't know what they do. There's probably things in it, but listen, it's it. You have to do what works for your lifestyle. You know, food. Again, it's just it's about staying consistent. There's was weeks when I was losing one pound in three weeks, or maybe I would was eating good and it went up, and then, you know, I was like, I was I was tempted. I was like, what's the point? What's the point of eating this way or eating in this deficit if it's not working, right? And then two weeks later, I was down maybe three pounds, right? Like maybe my body was holding on to something that those weeks or whatever. So it's just about staying consistent. And the best way that I have found to stay consistent is to eat everything you like in moderation, make little changes. You know, like I used to do tortilla pieces a lot. I don't know why I stopped doing them actually, but I did tortilla pieces a lot. I have ice cream almost every night. I account for it. I enjoy it. I want my ice cream and I look forward to it. Something I guess I should also mention, I drink a ton of water. I love water and tea. I drink tea in the mornings. Alcohol, I don't drink that much alcohol anymore. I mean, listen, I have my fun days back in college. I don't really drink that much alcohol anymore. Just in the summer, a glass of rosé, a little spicy margarita, but like I don't have alcohol on the daily because it's just not something that I want. But hey, if you like it, you can fit anything you want into your calories. That's like, do you, if a glass of wine at night is what makes you happy, then do it. And if you want me to make more what I eat in a days that are focused around weight loss, you know, I've been trying to kind of avoid that, but I feel like now I'm kind of opening a can of worms. I can do that. I definitely can do that if that is something that you guys want. So let me know down below. You know, I could I can put in numbers and macros and everything like that, but I didn't want to do that because I know it can be triggering for some people. So but also this is like my journey and what I'm doing. So it's like I can't make everyone happy. <laughs> Next part. Exercise. Let's get physical physical okay here's the thing i actually love to exercise exercise has never been a problem for me even when i was heavier i maybe exercised less but i really enjoyed exercising i loved to play tennis i was active as a kid i was a cheerleader for seven years i played tennis i like to go on walks i like to go on hikes i like kickboxing if you know if you follow me on instagram you know already that i love my peloton i love the freaking peloton i do a lot of weightlifting. like i just i'm a very i like being active currently right now i work out about five to six times a week lately it's been closer to six times a week but i listen to my body and if it's feeling super tired and super sore then we take that rest day or like you know, maybe I'll just switch it up and just go for like a light walk, kind of like an active recovery day. I'm not doing anything super crazy, I don't think. I, so I exercise for about an hour. So it's either a common, it's either the Peloton, like a full on Peloton of like about 60 minutes. So maybe, or like, okay, so it's like 55, cause I'll do like a 45 minute ride and a 10 minute cool down, okay? Sometimes I'll walk. I did a lot of walking. I was doing a lot of walking a few months ago where I would walk at an incline of about 13% at like four miles per hour. I didn't start that high. I kind of like worked my way up to it. I started with like a 12 through 30 kind of thing, um, which I'm sure you guys have heard about. And then I just kind of kept increasing because whatever. And then I recently got into running a little bit, which I try to stay away from because I kind of have bad knees, but I was like feeling like I wanted to run. So I just kind of went with it and I was kind of running a little bit again. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll do weights. So I'll do maybe like 15 minutes of cardio just to like warm my body up. And then I do like a 45 minutes um of weights and i just kind of do whatever i want that day i try I, sometimes i just divide it into like upper body lower body sometimes i do everything 
really depends on what's feeling sore, what feels like it needs to be worked out. I do love upper body day because I love having like a toned arm and toned backs and shoulders and everything like that. I, I love upper body day and my legs just naturally carry a lot more muscle in them. So I don't feel like as inclined to work my legs out all the time if I'm being quite honest. Another thing that I did was I did little challenges. So I started this in May where I started doing a hundred sit-ups every day, just to do it just to strengthen my core. Then in July, I did 100 sit-ups every day and 10 push-ups every day. And then in August, this month, that's almost over. Well, probably over by the time this video goes up, but um, I did 100 sit-ups every day and 20 squats. And they're just like little fun challenges that you can do and they're easy and I just like, I don't know, it's like a nice little thing. I'm like, okay, I did it. And it's kind of going back into that mindset thing of keeping promises to myself. And I promised myself I would do this and you know, just do it. For me, if everything, it's about the consistency. It's about staying consistent, just like with the eating, the exercise, it's about staying consistent. And finding the exercises you love, I can't emphasize how important moving your body is. There are tons of free workouts on YouTube. There are, you know, if you want to do something like the Peloton, you know, get some weights. I saw a TikTok of a girl who was like, when I first started my fitness journey, I had no, I had no weights and she would use her dog and her dog was like 20 pounds and she was doing squats with it and everything like that. So like get creative, use water bottles. There's a ton of of accounts that just make home exercise workouts go for a walk do what you got to do you know sometimes i just like to dance a little bit you know like it's whatever it's just whatever movement makes you happy it doesn't have to be for an hour every day it can be for 30 minutes it could be for 20 minutes it could be for five minutes but i think the most important thing is just starting tips and things I wish I kind of knew and things I discovered along the way so this is a slow long haul game do not get discouraged this you don't want to lose weight quickly, okay? If you lose weight quickly, it is most likely not going to stick. I've actually kind of started looking at plateaus in a way of like, this is really good because my body is happy. My body is happy where we are and that's why it's sticking to this weight, right? Like it's not, it's not gaining and it's not losing, but it's happy, that's why we're here. I like don't even think of plateaus as a bad thing because I've had plenty of plateaus and then like I just keep being consistent and then the next week I lose like another pound or something, okay? So it's like not that big of a deal. You have to stay consistent, you have to stick with it, you're making a promise to yourself and no matter how long it takes you, who cares? Just stay consistent with it. I'm saying two years, those two years flew, flew by, flew by. My second is that the scale will fluctuate so I say to take measurements, progress pictures, celebrate non-scale victories. I got a little tape measure, I measure my waist. Sometimes I measure other things, like my, um, my hips. I'm laughing because I measure my boobs sometimes. Unfortunately, it's the one thing I'll say, I've lost a lot of my boobs and I'm not happy about it. If only, if only I could pick where the weight would cough, come off from. You know, but like I measure my waist consistently and that's, I mean, listen, I've lost inches off my waist and I can see that because I track the progress. Um, sometimes the scale didn't go down, but the waist went down. The camera yelled at me that I've been recording for too long. But yeah, my rings, they used to be on the ring finger because that's where they fit. And now they're too big for the ring fingers and they have to go on the middle finger. So that's, I mean, that's like, come on, that's amazing. Seeing your clothes change and you'll see it. Take the progress pictures. Listen, it sucks. It sucks to have those pictures of you from when you're heavier. Okay, I know, like I know. But I can see all the progress and I can see all the changes. And without those pictures, I wouldn't be able to see it. Because there are some days when I wake up and I'm like, Ooh, like I don't think I look any different. We look at ourselves every day. Our brains are powerful and can definitely alter how we view ourselves. I mean, I body dysmorphia is very real. Having those pictures to look back on and even having these videos and stuff of me, like I can, I'm like, oh yeah, of course I see the difference, duh. Like, and on those days where I'm having kind of bad body images, I look at those pictures and I'm like, Francesca, you're so dumb. Like, <laughs> don't think that you haven't made any progress. Like, of course you've made like mountains of progress. Think about how you feel, what you're doing, and you know, I just you always gotta remind yourself. Like I think about that so much. Like I'm like, I make healthier choices in my food. I make you know consistent workouts, and I, I prioritize that over everything. Like I was not doing that two years ago. That in and of itself is just a massive, massive change. And give yourself at least three months of consistency. Okay. Uh, Weight loss does not happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a month. Well, it should happen in a month. You should be seeing hopefully at least a little bit of things happening, but three months, three months. If by at that point at three months, you're not seeing changes, you need to do a few things. One, you need to be honest with yourself. Are you strict? Are you following your eating plan? You know, are you following your calorie deficit carefully? Or are you snacking a little here and there, take a little sip of soda? We're all human and it happens. And there's days when I'm like, oh shoot, like I like, 
you know, I, I exceeded the calorie deficit because I like was picking a little bit and that's okay, but tomorrow we got to get back on track. You know, you got to be honest with yourself. So if that's happening and okay, so let's say you're doing everything perfectly and whatever, then maybe you need to switch some things around. Maybe you need to do something differently. Maybe you need to go see a doctor or a professional or somebody like that. Again, I can't say, I don't know you, I don't know what you're doing, but give yourself three months of solid consistency, solid effort, solid work. Okay. Do it. Just do it. Three months is not that long. I know it sounds, it sounds so long. It's not that long. In three months from now, you know what's gonna be happening? Christmas, New Year's, it's gonna be happening. That is gonna fly. We're gonna fly from right now to that end of the year. Something else that I just didn't touch upon in the food section that I'm just remembering now that I wanted to, I don't eat out a lot. I'm at restaurants for a few reasons. One, I've just, I, I think I can cook better. Most of the time, I like my food better. So it's easier for me to just eat what I like at home. Second is just because a lot of the vegan options tend to suck at restaurants. Like they're just not that great. So, I mean, it's just easier to just like what I like and, you know, make what I make and enjoy a better meal than maybe just like a wimpy little salad or something. You know, it just helps me stay on track better. But again, I'm not saying you cannot eat at restaurants if you're eating in a calorie deficit, like you totally can. And it's, you know, like this is a lifestyle. You're going to eat out at restaurants. You're going to have takeout. Like, you can't just make every single meal that you eat, but it's just something that I found that's been helping me and staying consistent. And you know, when I do do takeout or something, like I'll try and kind of like measure it out if I get it, you know, like if I get like a salad or something, or if I like have a piece of bread, maybe from like an Italian restaurant, I'll just like weigh the bread and I give an approximation just so I can like keep on being honest with myself and keep on staying on track. Maybe it's not fully close and maybe it's not exactly right, but it's what works for me. The last little thing that I wanted to just talk about was some questions that you guys asked me. If you've sent me questions, I pretty much addressed them. I knew that I would cover them earlier. These are the ones that I feel like I didn't really hit the nail on the head on. How to stay motivated. I feel like I talked about that a little bit, but again, this goes back to the mindset thing that we talked about. Remind yourself that you made a promise to yourself, stay consistent. And on those days that you don't feel like doing it, you need to remember your why. You need to remember. Nobody else is gonna remember. Nobody else is gonna remind you. Nobody else is coming to check on you. It's you. I told myself that I was gonna make promises to myself, that I was going to stay consistent, and that's how I stay motivated. Because if I can't keep promises to me, how, how can I expect anybody else to keep a promise to me? Any habits I had at a heavier weight that I changed to lose weight? The one thing that I will say that I changed was probably my portion sizes. I mean, listen, I used to eat like maybe like four servings worth of pasta, like in one shot. I mean, you know, and I would eat it till I felt really full, like really, like really full. And I didn't feel good after I ate it. It wasn't, it, it, there's a difference between eating to being full and feeling satisfied and satiated, right? And, and, and then overeating. And that was overeating. You know, it's weird. I was always a good eater. I love to eat fruits, vegetables. I was always like a, like a good eater. I don't eat a lot of fast food. I didn't really even like fast food. I, I used to drink a lot of soda. I won't lie. I did drink a lot of soda. And I was like, oh, like I don't eat, I don't, you know, it's like I don't do drugs and I don't smoke cigarettes. And I, okay, so I have a soda here and there, you know, but then here and there, the soda turned into once a day. I will say one thing that I did used to do a lot. Um, I love bagels and I used to have like two bagels on like Saturday or Sunday morning, like, sometimes three bagels, like I loved bagels and I still love a bagel, don't get me wrong, but that was a habit that was probably not the best. So I think it just comes down to that I realized that I need to just stay consistent and feel my body with better things and enjoy things in moderation. Eating before and after workouts, honestly, I don't, I don't follow like a, a plan of like, oh, like you need to get protein in like right away after you do a workout. Like if I'm really hungry after I work out, sometimes I'll just have like a banana with peanut butter or something and some chocolate chips, I love my chocolate chips. But I'm not like thinking too heavily about the science of like eating specific amounts of proteins and carbs and everything like that after a workout. I just, I eat when I'm hungry and I eat what I'm in the mood for. So I don't have like a specific like workout eating schedule. And then the last thing that someone asked me is do I fast? I don't fast. I don't really like intermittent fasting. I get hungry first thing in the morning and I want to eat. I actually like, it's so funny because maybe I messed myself up, but when I started dieting, I was like, oh, you need to eat breakfast. So I trained myself to eat breakfast because I used to never eat breakfast. So now I always eat breakfast. Maybe I should have done intermittent fasting back then, but now I wake up and I'm like, I need to eat. Like I cannot start my day. I know intermittent fasting works wonderfully for some people. And if that is what makes you happy, do it, do it. But I don't believe in fasting for myself. And also I do not believe in like long-term fasting or water fasts or 
any of that stuff, you, you need food. Our body needs food. There's one thing I've learned, eat. You can eat whatever you want and lose weight. You just have to eat it in moderation and balance. Just to sort of like wrap this video up, first of all, I really hope this was helpful if you've made it this far. Thank you for being here. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, you can come to me, but please again, go see somebody professional if you have if you have things you really need to talk about. Like I said, I still would like to lose about another 15 to 20 pounds, kind of just seeing how my body de develops. That's such a weird way to say it. But you know, like how everything's going in the process, what I feel like I want to accomplish. You know, I would like to have a, a little bit more toned up things and more areas and whatever, but I am gonna just take it day by day and just see what my body does. And I want my body to be healthy and happy and it'll, it's gonna settle where it wants to settle. I'm not gonna deprive it, I'm not gonna starve it, I'm not gonna do anything crazy to reach a certain number on the scale. I still have some things I wanna accomplish, but I'm really, really proud of myself for everything that I have already accomplished. And I am at a weight, I'm at the lowest weight I've ever been as an adult. I don't remember the last time I was this weight and this was my weight that I wrote down in my journal that I wanted to weigh. Knowing that it wasn't gonna be my end goal, but just that I was like, I wanna weigh this number and I'm, I'm here and that's like, it's really cool. I feel really happy and I feel really good. Our body, our physical body is, everyone's beautiful. You need to do, you need to do what's best for you. I'm, I will never tell anybody to lose weight. I'm nobody's doctor. That's why I didn't want to give you numbers because I didn't want you to hear, if, like I said, I weighed a certain amount that you're like, oh, I need to lose weight. Like you have to be happy. I just hope this video helps. You know, there's a lot about diet culture that I don't like and there's a lot of things, but I do believe that everybody deserves to be happy, healthy in their body and whatever that means for you is what that means. And for me, I know that I had weight that I needed to lose and mentality that I needed to lose, negative thoughts that I needed to lose. I think that's it. This is a long video and I'm sorry, but I wanted to get out what I wanted to say and I didn't want to be concise about it. That's, that's it, that's it. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> so. You know, if you like my videos, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I hope this video was helpful. If you have something you wanna talk about personally, message me, feel free to reach out, send me an email. If you don't feel comfortable leaving it in the comments, be nice to each other in the comments. Don't fight, please don't fight, okay? Be nice. Thank you for being here.